Second the four chapter twenty four chanting the song of sung by Lord Shiva, text twenty seven. Sirudruvacha Yoyam Vedishada Putra Viditam Vah Chikirsitam Anugrahaya Bhadram Vah Evam Me Darshanam Kritam Sri Rudruvacha Yuyam Vedishatah Putra Yuyam Vedishadah Putra Viditam Vaschikirsitam Viditam Vaschikirsitam Anugrahaya Bhadram Vah Anugrahaya Bhadram Vah Evam me darshanam kritam Shirudrovacha Yuyam vidishadah putra Viditam ya vachikirsitam Anugrahaya Bhadram Vah Vedam me darshanam kritam Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yudapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitham Tham Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhavitam Shcha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangye Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Ajano Lambita Bujoka Nakava Dato Sankirtanai Kapitaro Kamalaya Taksha Vishwambaro Dvijavaro Yuga Dharma Palo Vande Jagat Priyakaro Karuna Vataro Yandakh Pravishya Mama Vachi Mamam Prasuptam Sanjeeva Yata Kila Akila Shakti Daraksvadam Nanyam Shahasta Charana Shravanat Vagadim Prananamo Bhagavate Purushaya Tubiyam Yam Bravra Janta Manapeta Peta Kritiam Dvaipayana Viraka Tara Juhav Putreti Tanmaya Tayo Tara Vobine Dostam Sarva Buddha Hridayam Munimana Tosmi Hare Krishna So, 
we are reading the beginning of Rudra Gita, the first verse of the song of Lord Shiva. And this Rudra Gita is there in Srimad Bhagavatam to establish one of the main philosophical uh, points of Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Purana by its very name indicates that it's going to describe who is God. It's not called Krishna Puran. Uh, because the main point of the philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam to establish uh, who is God. Who is the Supreme Lord? Who is the Sarva Karana Karanam, the cause of cause of all causes? And people are generally confused about this point, especially in India and in Bangladesh. You know, Hinduism is propounding so many gods. S 33 million. 33 million. You can choose whoever you like. <laughs> And in Kali Yuga, there is many more gods now. You know, in Kali Yuga, it's very simple to become a god. You just, you just have to know little marketing and you can market yourself as god. No problem. <laughs> so it's so I think by now it's much more than thirty three million gods. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, people are confused about this point because uh, even big, big, big swamis, you know, they, they sincerely think that Hinduism is speaking about many gods, not one god. I remember once uh, was uh, Shankaracharya, I believe he was a Shankaracharya from Kanchi, came to Russia. He's a big, you know, leader of Mayavad philosophy. He is one of the representative of, living representative of Shankaracharya at this point. He has, he has huge following in India. And he came around the year 2000, he came to Russia with some yatra, with some yatra to, to establish Hinduism all over the world. So he came to our temple. Uh, you know, he, he even gave little lecture about Srimad Bhagavatam. 
I mean, there was some little audience for him, and he was speaking about, you know, was explaining nicely how Sukadeva Goswami was enamored by uh, his uh, the verses of Shiman Bhagavatam. He was quoting Barhapidam Natavarava Bhuh Karnayov Karnikaram Vibratvasam Kanaka Kapisham Vajayandim Chamalam. So he was telling the story how. Uh, Vyasadev allured Shukadev Goswami back when Shukadev Goswami ran from his uh, home and how he got him back by the verses of Bhagavatam. So, Dini, um, say, and I thought, so nice, now, you know, he knows the philosophy. <laughs> and then he called me out. And he said, I want to tell you one secret. He said, this, this, Srila Prabhupada, the founder of your movement, is a very clever man. Very intelligent. I... <laughs> he cheated all of you. <laughs> because he said there is only one God. <laughs> <laughs> and because you are born in Christian culture, you would not accept anything else. So he had to do it. <laughs> but we all know that there is many gods. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so what I want to say is that people are confused about this point. But Srimad Bhagavatam is extremely clear about this point. <clears throat> Actually, this is the point which Vyasadev wants to establish very firmly, and therefore uh, he doesn't even mention Krishna in the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. First verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. He says, let's meditate on this Satyam Param, Satyam Param Dhimahi. He doesn't want to establish something sectarian, uh, you know, somebody worships Ganesh, somebody worships Durga, somebody worships somebody else, and somebody worships Krishna. There's, usually people say, you know, there's no difference between this. But, but he specifically says, Satyam Param Dhimahi, let's worship the supreme absolute truth. And then he proves through different stories uh, in the course of Srimad Bhagavatam who is this Satyam Param, who is this Supreme Absolute Truth. And then he comes, of course, to the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, where the uh, sweet pastimes of the Supreme Absolute Truth are described as the highest uh, means of liberation from the attachment to this world. <laughs> But here in the fourth canto, uh, he is establishing, uh, again, a very important side point uh, 
uh, of course, it's not the side point. It's, uh, he's establishing the point that uh, the only Aradhya, the only worshipable Lord is uh, Vishnu, is Krishna. Uh, and this is the, the supreme goal of our endeavors. Like people, they think that the supreme goal of their endeavors, usually people who are following Hinduism, they think that Svargalok is the supreme goal and the supreme destination of every living entity. <laughs> but uh, uh, here uh, Rudra himself will say that it's not Svargalok, it's Vishnu Padam, it's Vaikuntha Lok, which is the supreme goal of all endeavors. <laughs> He will say it in the uh, 29th verse, in the very, you know, the, this is the very beginning of Rudra Gita. He will establish very firmly that Krishna or Vishnu is the supreme worshipable object and the supreme abode or supreme destination is uh, his abode or Vaikuntha Lok. Because if people don't know this, they waste uh, the valuable time of uh, human life by trying to worship somebody else and by trying to achieve some other goals. And then another point, which he is also very firmly establishing in this Rudra Gid, basically three points, that Vishnu is the Supreme Lord, that the Supreme Destination or Supreme Goal is his abode, and that the Supreme Process to achieve this abode, the Supreme Process of all the other processes is Bhakti. Bhakti. <laughs> In other words, in this Rudra Gita, he establishes Sambandha Abhide and Prayojana very firmly. Bhagavan Sambanda, Bhakti Abhideya, Prema Prayojanam. We know this uh, three points, and this is the meaning of these uh, beautiful prayers of Lord Shiva. Uh, so, uh, here he says that uh, and uh, that uh, I already know what you are going to do, my dear sons of the king. And I am very pleased that you are going to do what you are going to do. It's actually very interesting because uh, Prachetas wanted to uh, uh, worship the Lord uh, to achieve a material goal. They are not counted among the most pure devotees of the Lord. Uh, his father, uh, King Prachina Barhishat, uh, told them, you should produce a child. And, uh, you know, usually nowadays 
if somebody, you know, you know, nowadays nobody has to tell anyone that you should produce a child. Uh, everyone is anyway doing it without being ordered. <laughs> And everyone becomes very enthusiastic if somebody tells you, please produce a child. <laughs> but uh, the sons of uh, Prachina Barhi, when they heard this, um, this order of uh, their father, they became uh, very reserved. They were not really eager to do it. And they knew it's a, it's a very responsible thing. You, you know, if you want to produce somebody, you better do it in a proper way. Otherwise, you will produce somebody who will create so much trouble for you. Then, you know, you will regret so many times that you did it. <laughs> Nowadays, Prabhupada used to say that people are producing children like cats and dogs. Cats and dogs don't, don't think twice before producing children, but nowadays people are not much different from cats and dogs in this regard. They just produce whoever comes out, you know, that's fine. <laughs> You know, you know, to produce a car, they make sure that the car is proper, you know, there are so many, you know, checks and balances, you, so much design is going to produce a simple car. They, they know that the car should be proper, but to produce a child, they don't think twice. Let's produce somebody, you know, God knows who will come out. <laughs> And therefore, uh, when the father told them, please produce a child, uh, they became very serious about it and they said, we should perform some austerities so that we will control our mind. You know, this, it is said in, uh, in the scriptures that if you want to produce a child, you will produce a child according to state, the state of consciousness, which is there during the process of uh, producing the child, during the sexual intercourse. <clears throat> In other words, you have to think about God uh, during the, you know, this intercourse. You have to think about God during intercourse. <laughs> Which is very difficult, you know. Usually people don't think about God when they do this. <laughs> so therefore, they, being very responsible, they thought we better prepare ourselves uh, to uh, produce a child. <laughs> Uh, 
and we know that you can think about God uh, only if you practice thinking about God uh, again and again and again. It's not so easy. <laughs> The mind is very easily thinking about the objects of enjoyment of this world. But it's very difficult to concentrate the mind on God. And uh, Krishna himself says, "Yam yam vapismaram bhavam tyajatante kalevaram." Uh, no, no. Uh, what is this? Sadat uh, bhava bhavita. You will think about God uh, at the time of death, which is a very critical moment. Only if you do it, sadat bhava bhavita. Only if you constantly practice thinking about God, if you constantly sadat bhava, if this bhava uh, will be established firmly in your mind. So the same principle is true if you want to think about God during uh, the sexual intercourse, during producing the child, you have to practice it beforehand. And therefore, uh, the uh, sons of uh, King Prachina Barhi decided to uh, undergo severe austerities and uh, think about God constantly uh, over 10,000 years. It's not easy to learn how to think about God constantly. Sometimes devotees become a little desperate, you know, they chant for two weeks Hare Krishna and still the mind is wandering and they say, something is wrong with me. You know, my mind is wandering. I cannot concentrate on, on the holy name. No, nothing is wrong with you. Uh, you are still in the material world. Everything is fine. Everything is going on. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> to learn to think about God requires little time, some time. Not necessarily 10,000 years, but, but at, least, at least a few years. And anyway, so when uh, they met Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva in the very first verse says that I appeared in front of you uh, because I know that you're going to worship Krishna himself, Vishnu himself. I'm pleased with you without you worshiping me. I'm, without you worshipping him, you, you, you were not worshipping Shiva. Yeah, he says, he says, I'm a cushy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. <laughs> Even though you didn't worship me, I, I'm giving my darshan to you and, uh, you know, I will give you all the benedictions because you, they didn't even start worshiping the Lord. They, uh, they just have the intention, we want to worship the Lord. And it was enough to please Lord Shiva. So, 
You know, one may ask, uh, I also want to worship Krishna, why Lord Shiva doesn't appear in front of me? One may ask, you know, if Lord Shiva appeared in front of Prachetas uh, before they started to worship the Lord, just having this intention to worship the Lord, why he doesn't appear in front of me? It would, it would be nice if somebody before going to Bhakta program will always get the uh, darshan of Lord Shiva, you know. <laughs> I guess there is some difference between the prachetas and their determination and our determination to worship Lord Vishnu. <laughs> in any case, the Lord Shiva uh, appeared in front of them and saying uh, that I'm, you know, I'm Ikushi, I'm very pleased with you. And uh, the Prabhupada, he makes very important point for every one of us that we don't have to worship anyone separately. Everything can be obtained by worshiping the Supreme Lord. <laughs> You know, sometimes we think that uh, by doing bhakti we will miss anything in this world, that we will not get anything, that not get anything. But actually, by doing bhakti, uh, we will get everything and more than even we want. The life is very short. And we can do so many things during this short period of time. We can waste our life and our time in so many varieties of ways. We can watch TV, we can worship this demigod or that demigod, we can do so many useless things in this life. <laughs> <clears throat> but actually, the best use of our time and our uh, energy is to worship the Supreme Lord with complete determination because by worshiping Him, we will obtain everything which we require. <laughs> Like this. This is the point which uh, Lord Krishna wants to teach his father before Govardhan Lila. He says, why are you wasting your time and energy and so many good food stuff by worshiping Indra? Just don't do it, it's useless. Srimad Bhagavatam wants to teach us that there is something very important, something, you know, if you do this, you will get everything else. You know, you, you will not, you, you don't have to do so many other things, just do one thing, and by doing this, you will obtain everything else. And this is the most uh, valuable use of our time. Just do something, everything else will come by doing one thing. <coughs> so Prabhupada, he makes this point very clearly. He says, you don't have to 
worship any demigods, the demigods will become pleased if you worship Lord Krishna. And this is the test of pure devotion. The devotees, they don't want to worship anyone else. They only want to worship Krishna. And if somebody comes to him, like Lord Shiva here, they will not ask uh, for anything else. They will only ask Lord Shiva, please give us uh, devotion to Krishna. <laughs> And that's exactly And that's exactly the reason why Lord Shiva doesn't appear in front of us. Because he's not sure whether we will ask him right benediction or we will ask something stupid. <laughs> he doesn't want to distract us, <laughs> and therefore he doesn't appear in front of us. <laughs> there is a very nice story in Vishnu Dharmotar Puran, which uh, Srila Jiva Goswami quotes in his Bhakti Sandarbha. <clears throat> that once uh, King Ambarish, the king of Mathura, and the king of the whole world actually, uh, he was worshipping uh, Lord Vishnu very, very, you know, he was very determined and he was worshipping him for many, many, many years. And Lord Vishnu wanted to test him how pure his devotion is towards him. So he turned himself into Indra and he turned Garuda into Airavat. And he appeared in front of Ambarish uh, on Airavat, you know, you can see this Lord Indra with so many eyes and, you know, with his glory and, you know, big crown and, you know, he's there on Airavat and he's just in front of Ambarish. And King Kambari, she respected uh, Lord Indra and he said, my dear Lord Indra, how can I serve you? Thank you very much for coming here. Can I serve you? And uh, uh, Indra, he became very proud and he said, you know, usually when I come, people ask me for some benediction. So please ask me benediction, whatever you want, I can give you. Yeah, yeah, I can give you any Vardhan, whatever you like. Vardhan is, you know, I, whatever you like, I'll do it. And King Ambarish said, I'm, I'm really sorry, I, I didn't worship you. I didn't want you to come. You came, I thought you need something from me. Uh, it's not that I need something from you. I, I didn't call you here. And 
And uh, but Lord Indra, he, he became, you know, he became a little angry, and he said, you know, but you're worshiping Vishnu, you know, uh, you, it must mean that you want something from him. I can do whatever you want from Vishnu. I can give it to you. Whatever you want from Vishnu, I'll give you the same thing. Just ask me something. <laughs> And then King Kambaris, he became a little angry too. He said, you know, why are you getting angry and upset? I didn't call you and why are you so angry at me, you know? And who is this, by the way, who is this little insect with you on, on, on whom you are sitting, you know? It's uh, this, this uh, he just said, you know, he, he, he basically neglected, he said, this is big airavata, big elephant. And he said, this is a little insect. Who is this insect with you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, no, Lord, I'm not going to ask you for anything. Just go, 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 go. Don't, don't distract me. <laughs> I have something more important to do. <laughs> and then, of course, Vishnu is playing the role, he's testing, and he really became very angry and he took his Vajra and he, you know, he wanted to kill King Kambaris with his Vajra. <laughs> And, you know, Indra took his Vajra and uh, King Abarish took his chanting beats and started chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> so, <laughs> didn't really work. <laughs> So he, he then uh, he appeared as Lord Vishnu and said, oh, I'm very pleased with you. <laughs> so in any case, uh, that's the point which uh, Prabhupada makes that you know, demigods are automatically pleased. You don't have to please them by your separate endeavors. Uh, and sometimes they may come to you and they may test your determination. But if you are convinced that uh, Vishnu is the supreme puja devata, and uh, if you're convinced that uh, uh, the bhakti is the supreme process and the supreme goal of all our endeavors is Vaikuntha. You will only do Krishna Bhakti. So, and Prabhupada, he quotes the verse of Bilva Mangal Thakur, which, he, which was one of his favorite verses. <coughs> Mentions this verse from Krishna Karnamritam, Bhakti Stvai Stiratara Bhagavan Yadisya Daivena Nahpalati Divya Kishora Murti. Mukti Svayam Mukalitanjali Seva Tesman Dharmartha Kama Gataya Samaya Pratiksha. 
So Bilva Mangal Thakur in Krishna Karnamritam, he says that, uh, oh my dear Lord, when the bhakti towards you, bhakti stvais tiratara bhagavan yadisyat, if the bhakti towards you becomes stiratara, becomes very, very dridha, very, very firm, and very much established, bhakti stvais tiratara bhagavan yadisyat, then the result of this bhakti will become divena nahpalati divya kishore murti. Then uh, the fall, the, the fruit of these endeavors uh, will become that uh, you will become visible towards us. We will see you in this divine form of Divya Kishore Murti uh, as a youth, as a ever beautiful youth. And the Murti and this is the highest achievement which is there. This achievement is so high that at that point, when we see you in person, uh, the goddess of liberation uh, herself will come in front of us. Mukti Svayam Mukalitanjali, with, with folded hands, Mukti, the goddess of Mukti, Mukti Devi, will come to us and uh, she will ask us, can I do some service for you? And at that point, we will say, no, go, go, go. <laughs> And then Dharmartha Kama Gataya Samaya Pratiksha. Then, you know, the goddess of fortune comes close, but Bilva Mangal Thakur says that Artha Kama and, uh, uh, and uh, Dharma, Artha and Kama, they will wait at some distance. They will not even, uh, you know, come close. They will say, maybe he will remember about us at this point and we will do something for you. <laughs> You know, Samaya Pratiksha, they will patiently wait when you will, uh, with some kindness, look upon them and perhaps engage them in your glorious service. <laughs> anyway, that's the beginning of Rudra Gita and uh, during this uh, Rudra Gita, Lord Shiva will again and again make this point that uh, Krishna, O Vishnu, is the supreme worshipable deity, and the supreme process is bhakti, and the uh, supreme uh, destination or supreme goal is Vaikuntha O Vishnu Pad. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I have to finish. If, if we have time for questions, we can ask for questions. Uh, he says, he says, um, like, <coughs> 
who is, who is, who is, who is, who is, as you told that you know we should worship only Krishna and Vishnu. But we see many times like Rukshmi Devi, he worship Durga and Kathyani, Brata, uh, all the uh, gopis that he did. So please explain. Yeah. So thank you very much. It's an important question. Uh, and uh, 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 Srila Jiva Goswami extensively deals uh, with this question in Bhakti Sandarbha. First of all, uh, he establishes the point that we should respect all the demigods. They are great people and we should uh, respect them. <clears throat> uh, this respect is very important because we, uh, you know, have to learn how to respect everyone and of course demigods are not an exception from this rule. From this rule, we have to respect everyone. Amani namanadena. You know, everyone has to be respected. Because sometimes uh, devotees become little fanatical and they uh, start disrespecting demigods and disrespecting this and that, and this is not good. This is actually a manifestation of pride. Uh, but and uh, uh, Srila Goswami says that sometimes devotees do worship demigods like Lord Shiva or Katyayani Durga, as you mentioned. And he says that uh, there is a Two, uh, in two occasions, you can worship the demigods uh, because of two reasons. There are two reasons why uh, the worship of demigod uh, is allowed for, for devotees who follow the path of pure, devotee, of pure devotion, uh, uh, pure bhakti. And uh, this will not break, uh, this will not inflict upon their desire to worship only Krishna. <laughs> He says, one occasion you can worship the demigods as parts of Krishna. As his servants, and you understand very clearly this connection between uh, them. They are anxious of the Supreme Lord, and we worship them as such. And, uh, 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 you know, and he. He gives a very, again, another example. He gives a, a quotes a story from, again, from another Purana, I think also from Vishnu Dharmotra Purana, story about somebody who was worshipping Shiva like this. I, I will not tell the story, but uh, basically uh, this man was worshipping Shiva. Uh, he, he didn't, he was a pure bhakta, but he had to worship Lord Shiva because uh, one uh, demonic person uh, wanted to force him to worship Lord Shiva. Um, and being forced to worship Lord Shiva, he uh, uh, realized, he said, that uh, ultimately my Lord is there in the heart of Lord Shiva, so I can worship as well Lord Shiva, knowing very well that uh, uh, my Lord is in his heart, so I'm worshiping my Lord, not Lord Shiva as such. Uh, 
He was worshiping Sivalingam, but uh, he was meditating upon uh, Nrisimhadev, who was sitting in the heart of Lord Shiva. And therefore, instead of chanting uh, Om Namah Shivaya, he chanted Om Namah Narasimhaya. <laughs> And when that happened, the, this demonic person who was outside, waiting from outside, and he heard that he is chanting Om Namoh Narasimhaya, and he became very angry, and he ran into the temple of Lord Shiva with his sword and wanted to kill this guy, uh, this devotee. And and at this moment, the Shiva Lingam broke and Rishimhadev appeared from the Shiva Lingam. <laughs> and this deity of, uh, of Rishimhadev, which appeared from Shiva Lingam, is still there in South India. <laughs> So you can worship uh, any demigod by meditating the, the parts or meditating upon Krishna in their heart. That's possible. You can worship... You can respect them as servants of the Supreme Lord. That's also possible. And you can also worship them uh, and uh, ask them for some benediction if this benediction is connected with your bhakti. If you want to go to Lord Shiva, you can ask Lord Shiva, please make my bhakti very strong. I know you are uh, Vaishnavanam Yathashambhu, you are the best of Vaishnavas, so please give me, uh, uh, make my desire to have bhakti very strong. Help me to worship my worshipable Lord. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly what the inhabitants of Vrindavan do. They they ask the other gods because for them Krishna is not God. For them Krishna is their village boy. And they cannot worship Krishna because Krishna is not God. Krishna is their neighbor. <laughs> now, there is a little story, I will tell the story and finish the class. It's a nice story. You know, once a devotee, Iskon devotee came to Vrindavan. <laughs> and of course, the first thing which he will do in Vrindavan to find some internet uh, shop, internet cafe. <laughs> I think, I think when, when ISKCON devotees will go to Vaikuntha, they first will ask, where is this internet connection here? <laughs> so, he went to this internet shop and, you know, there was, of course, now there is connection between the spiritual world and the rest of the world <laughs> by internet, no problem. The cafe was there in Vrindavan. And then, you know, he sat down and then he saw that, you know, that, that the owner of this shop uh, you know, he, he saw that there is a Durga Devi in the altar and he's worshipping Durga Devi. 
And he was very surprised. It was his first time in Vrindavan, and he thought, you know, something is wrong here with the local people. They don't know what they're doing. You know, they're worshipping Durga Devi. He, he took this opportunity to preach and he came to the owner of the shop and he said, what are you doing? You are just wasting your time. You are worshipping this Durga Devi. You should worship Krishna. And this owner of the shop, he made his eyes very big and round. And <laughs> He said, Krishna, how can we worship Krishna? Krishna is our neighbor and relative. We cannot worship. <laughs> so that's that's how the that's how and why the inhabitants of Vrindavan worship. <laughs> so when Krishna will become your neighbor, you may worship Durga Devi, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.